this is going to be a tutorial for Google Slides and um, after I'm going to have a short little check for understanding and you're going to have to create your own Google Slide of what I'm going to be adding in this tutorial. So we're first going to go to um, slides.new. Um, you can get there from here um, or if you are at just a regular Google page and you are signed into your account, you can go to these um, nine dots right here and go to a new slides presentation here. Okay, so there's a few different ways, but I'm just going to click on a new blank presentation. Um, and then the first thing that happens is your themes pop up. So we're going to just create a blank presentation for right now, but that's an option. Um, you may want to change your page setup. So I went to file page setup and I'm going to custom to make it the size of a paper. So I'm going to do eight and a half by 11 inches and hit apply. And this is the size of a paper. The only purpose to do this would be, um, if you wanted to print out the paper or your presentation. So this is a landscape view. If you didn't want to, then that's fine. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click your mouse and drag down to highlight everything and then hit delete. Okay. So I can hit command Z or control Z to bring it back. Okay. Again, I'm going to I just clicked outside to unhighlight everything. I'm going to click here and drag down. I'm not letting go of my mouse until now. I'm letting go. It's highlighting everything and I'll hit delete. Okay, so you can hit Control Z or Command Z depending on what computer you're on to undo, but you can also use these two arrow buttons to undo is the left and redo is the right. So if I clicked undo, it would undo my delete, and if I clicked redo, it would redo the delete. So these buttons are going to act as your lifeline. Anytime you move something that you don't want to move or you delete something you don't want to delete, you can always press undo. Okay. So the first thing we're going to go over is a text box. This box right here will let you, again, you can either just click once and it will give you a, a standard size box. Or if I wanted to um, click on it, the text box again, if I wanted it to make it a certain size, let's say I wanted it to go from the very edge to the very edge, then I can click and drag um, my own size box. Okay. Once I have my text box, you can, this is your font here. So you can change your font. You can change the size of your font. You can bold, italicize, underline. This is the text color. You can change your color. And then this is the highlighter tool. Okay. So I'm just going to write my name here. And then I'm going to come down here and resize my text box because I just realized that I don't want it this big. So if your, if your um, cursor is a cursor like this, it's going to, um, you're going to click and it's going to um, have you edit the text. Okay. If your cursor changes to these four arrows, you're going to be able to click and move around your text box. So I won't be able to move around my text box unless I have these four arrows. Okay. Um, notice the red lines that pop up. These red lines mean um, that it's centered vertically. You see the vertical line going all the way up and all the way down. So it's centered vertically and now it's centered horizontally. So now this is exactly in the middle of my page. So you can use those red lines to guide your positioning on your objects to make them exactly where you want them. Um, so in order to resize the text box, you need to go down until you have one arrow. So this one arrow is going to let you go up and down in that direction. Okay. And then same thing on this side, you want to choose that one arrow. Okay, and resize it this way. All right. If I if I um, notice I did the middle um, dots, so there's three dots on this side. I did the middle dot to resize it this way, and I did the middle dot here. So it's one, two, three dots. I did the middle dot here to resize up and down. Okay. So if you were to take any of the corner dots, notice it's a one arrow, but it's a diagonal arrow. Okay. So it's going to reshape um, in the um, in a diagonal. So it's going to keep the proportions of the height and the length the same. Okay. So that's that way. If you want to reshape an object that way, let's say if your text box is too small and it makes it double lines or triple lines, then you just take this arrow key here and drag it out. Okay. As far as you need it. So that's the text box. Notice when I clicked off, I don't have, it's a transparent box. You can make it so that it is um, so that you can see the box. So if I wanted, I would click on it again, make, wait till those four arrows, because if I dragged over and I have the cursor, then that means I'm going to, I can't move my, I'm just going to be highlighting. I can't move my box. You see how I just moved the I to the end there. I'm just going to hit control Z 
and that happens a lot. So I'm going to wait until I see those four arrows and then I'm going to click and move. Okay, so now that my box is highlighted, I, I have these options here. So this is my fill color. If I wanted to fill it in red, I could, but I don't, so I'm going to go Command Z. Um, but this is my border color. So remember, it's a transparent border. Now I'm going to highlight it and make that border black. Okay, so now I have a black border. Okay, and now I'm going to highlight it again. Right next to the border is your border thickness or your border weight. I can make it a four point and you see how thicker it got, how much thicker. I can make it a 12 point and make it very, very thick. Okay, and I can also, it has to be highlighted because notice you don't have that option anymore here. Once it's highlighted, oops, once it's highlighted, you have the options. So the thickness of the line again was here and right next to the thickness of the line is how the line is going to appear. So you can make the line dotted, you can make the line a dash, you can make the line a combination of dotted and dash. So it's up to you. You can play around with it. Um, you can make it in the very center. You see how the horizontal and vertical lines, that's right in the center of your title. Okay, so that is just um, what you can do in as terms of the text box. Now let me show you the shapes. So you go to the shapes button here. Again, if you just hold your cursor over, it says shape. So I can make a square, I can make a rectangle um, with um, curved edges. I can make basically any shape, any arrow. Um, these are called callouts, but they're basically just little signs. Um, and then your equation buttons. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a rectangle with rounded corners. Um, and again, my shape is highlighted, so I can change my color. Okay, I can make my border black and a little bit thicker. Okay, also on the color, this is solid colors right here, but I can also pick a gradient color. And a gradient color just means it goes from one color to the other. Um, it looks very pretty. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that is that. And um, if I double click in any shape, so I'm here, I double click, it becomes a text box. So you don't have to make your shape and then put a text box over it. That would just be um, a lot of room for mistakes. So um, again, what I just did there was um, if I click inside my text box here, I'm not going to be able to delete it. Okay, so if I'm in the cursor, I'm not going to be able to delete it. I had to hit wait till it has those four arrows, click on it, and so the whole thing is highlighted, and then I can delete it. Okay, but once again, I'm going to double click inside any shape, and it's going to become my text box. I'm going to, up here is my, to change any of my text, so I'm going to change my text color and make it white. Okay, I'm going to make it larger so you can see. Okay, and write your text. So now for your text, Again, all of these buttons up here are for your text. So this button, it says align. You can align it in the center. Okay. Right now, it's aligned both in the center and in the middle. You see how it's in the middle of my text box or my, um, my rectangle? If I wanted it to be at the top, I would click on that button. Okay. Again, if I wanted it, oops, if I wanted it to be in the middle, I would just click on the middle button. Okay. And the same thing for the bottom. So this right here is if you're writing a paragraph and you want your line spacing to be a double space or one and a half spaces and so on. Okay, this right here is your bullets and numbering. So you can do it, oh no, well this is just your numbering. Your bullets are here. Okay, so if you click on the arrow next to, so this is the numbering. If you click on it next to it, it'll give you a, um, a list of options. Same thing for your bullets. You can just click on here and you see how my bullet um, showed up there. I'm going to hit Command Z or control Z and I'm going to hit now the, the arrow next to it and now I have all of these options so you can make little check boxes and I can check it off okay so we're going to make a new slide so I'm just going to go up here to slide and hit new slide and then it's going to give me my second slide if I wanted to insert a slide in the middle here if I had this highlighted and I went to new slide then it would just give me a new slide underneath but let's say if I wanted to insert a slide I would just, um, hi you see how this is highlighted? I would click in the middle so that there's this line, and then I would hit new slide, okay? So you can do it that way, or let's say if I want to insert another slide here, I can go to this plus, and this is a shortcut for a new slide. You just click on the plus, and it gives you a new slide. The same thing, I'm going to click here, this arrow next to the plus will bring out all of the preset layouts. So if your teacher has made any different layouts, um, so this layout is a title and two columns. Um, so these are just the different kinds of layouts. There's some with pictures, um, text only, title only. Um, so this is really not important unless you're 
um, making a presentation but um, you can always just start with a blank slide is what I recommend or if your teacher has a custom layout you would do that so I'm going to again click on this arrow all of the layouts come out and I'm gonna hit this blank layout right here okay and now I'm gonna show you how to insert a picture so this um, button right here says insert image okay so I am going to if I click on this button alone it's going to um, act as if I'm clicking the arrow Okay, if I click on the arrow, same thing. Okay, so either you click on the button or the arrow, it's going to ask you where do you want to insert your picture from? Do you want to insert your picture and upload it from your computer, so a file? Do you want to search the web? Do you want to um, get it from your drive, your photos, by URL? So maybe you have a photo that you liked that you saw online and you have the link to it. Um, or from your computer camera. Now this button we'll get to later, but let's say I want to search the web and let's say I want to search for a cat. Okay, so if I just put cat, it's going to come up with a picture and I can click and drag or you can click on the picture and click on multiple pictures and it'll have a check mark and then hit insert. That works as well. So I'm just going to uncheck this because I want to show you that if you just put cat, it's going to have pictures of cats, but it's going to have all of this space around it um, in this square. Okay, so if I wanted just the cat, I would put cat PNG. And when you put PNG, this is going to, most of the time, get you pictures without the white um, box around it. So this is better if I had a background color. So I'm going to go, I, I clicked off all of the images and onto my background. I'm going to go to background and I'm going to choose a different color. And I'm going to choose a gradient color just because I like the way this looks. So notice there's no white around, there's no square color around this cat because it's a PNG, it's a transparent background. So if you're looking for like a sticker type of picture that you want to put on your notebook, then I would suggest you put PNG at the end of all of your um, image searches. So I'm just going to close this out. <clears throat> okay. And like I said, I want to show you um, how to take a picture um, of, let's say if you have you're working on a math assignment and you have a scratch paper, I would go to insert picture by camera. Okay, and it's going to bring up your camera. So this says no camera is selected. So since my camera is already used because I'm recording, um, it's not going to come up and I don't have another camera plugged in, so I can't uh, select it. But um, your cameras will not be in use. So once this, this box is normally um, a picture of you. <laughs> so you would just put your work in front of there um, and take the picture and once you hit that picture camera button the picture of you will automatically come into the document just like this okay so I apologize I can't show you what that looks like but just take my word for it I've tried it and I know it works and I also have other tutorials out there um, that shows an example of that so if you want to go look in the student tutorials under my playlist then you can do that too okay so I think I went through everything that I wanted to go through I want to show you really quick um, what an assignment would look like. So notice here um, solving two-step linear equations um, and then you have here the directions. It says type answer here. So notice again if I have the four arrows I'm gonna be able to move the box. Okay, If I move the box twice I'm gonna command Z once, command Z twice and it'll put it back where it is. Okay, So remember if you're wanting to type inside the box you need the cursor. So you see the four arrows and now the cursor so if you're on the cursor, then you can click. And if I just double or triple click, it'll highlight the whole thing. If I double click, it'll highlight just that word. Okay. If I triple click, it'll highlight the whole sentence. Okay. So again, I'm going to click off and show you again. I'm going to wait till it's the cursor, triple click, and then I can start typing my answer. Okay. So um, that's that. And then the same thing in here. Okay. Notice. Sorry about that, guys. So notice this sum. Okay, was the four arrows right here. So don't click and expect to um, type. So some things on here you can't move. Okay, so the sum is one of them. I can't move that sum. So the only thing that I can move are these text boxes. Um, but and then if you accidentally do move them, then uh, you can put it back. So let's say the sum is 80. And let's say I want to make this bigger for my teacher. I don't have to highlight it. Oh, yes, I do. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes you don't have to highlight on some programs, but on slides you do. Okay, so you would highlight your text and make it bigger. 
Okay, um, again, this down here, you wanted a picture of your work. So again, you would highlight the box, go to insert by camera, and that would insert a picture of your work. Okay, so I hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial. And again, I'm going to have a, a link that you can go and practice these. I'll have some questions for you and ask you to um, fill out and make some things based on what you learned from today. Okay, so as always, take advantage of the rest of your day and do something great. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.